why are there no blue roses? And it's a really good question because lots of things in the garden are all sorts of colours and people have been trying to grow blue roses for years and no one's ever made it and there's a really good reason why. So what I've got here is purple cabbage water and all you need to do to make that is to take some red cabbage, chop it up, boil it in a few centimetres of water and after a while the water goes, it's really deep rich purple and that's what's in there. Now I'm going to use these so I can see what's going on. So what I'm going to do is put a little bit of the purple water in these two cups and some of it in the other one. Okay, so this, this purple stuff, this is anthocyanin. And the first thing to do is to see what happens when you put it in different conditions. And what I'm going to do is put it in an acid condition. So I've got half a lemon here. Let's squeeze that in. Squeeze lemon juice all over myself. Oops, and a few pips. And you see that has gone a very, very pretty shade of red. And that's because of the acid in the lemon. Now, like, now we can try the opposite, um, an alkaline environment. And what's in here, it's quite hard to find um, alkaline things actually in the kitchen. This is laundry powder mixed with water. And when this goes in there, you get this spectacular green colour. I love this colour. Um, and so this anthocyanin is an indicator, just like the indicators you may have used at school by its colour, it tells you whether things are acid or alkaline. So we can see it goes red in the acid and it goes green in alkaline. If you find something that's even stronger, an even stronger alkaline, it'll go yellow. So just with purple cabbage, you can tell the pH of different things in your kitchen. Now, roses are also uh, full of anthocyanins and the petals here have each one in the vacuole, which is a little compartment within the cell, has got anthocyanins inside it. Now, the anthocyanin that is in a rose um, is in a fairly uh, neutral or acid environment inside the rose. And it's the vacuole is really well protected. So the reason it's pink is that it's in an environment that makes that pigment pink. If I do an extremely mean thing um, and mash it up, I can release the anthocyanins. And we can see what happens if we put them in a different pigment colour. This might take a while. Now... So now the anthocyanin that was inside the rose petals is starting to come out. So what I can do with it is also see what happens if I put it in a different type of environment. Now inside the rose, it's a little bit acid. So what I'm going to do is add an alkaline to it. And I'm going to add it, add it to the rose here. And what you'll see is that where it drops, it goes blue. So inside them, all the time, pink and red roses have the ability to go blue because if you put that pigment in an alkaline environment, it would be blue. And what's frustrating to the florists and the rose growers and all the people who tried to grow blue roses is that that vacuole, that little sack in the middle of the cell where all the pigment is kept, is spectacularly good at keeping alkaline out. So however much you put alkaline into the flower, it's not going to get into the vacuole and so the anthocyanin is going to stay red. And that is why there are no blue roses.